Our next topic is going to be a super brief introduction to cascading style sheets. Much like HTML, we could have an entire course in HTML and CSS. Um, but we're going to just do a very brief introduction, show you some tools to help you do this, um, and, and then uh, practice some of the more advanced stuff. Um, so a little compare and contrast with HTML and CSS. They definitely go together, though. HTML specifies what content will be displayed in your browser. CSS defines how that content should be displayed. Um, and CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. I kind of glossed over that. Um, so you can see here it's about the styling of the content, um, not what the content is. So they definitely go to together, as we're going to see here in a moment. Um, with CSS, we have a rule set, um, and a rule set has a certain syntax, which I've illustrated a, an example of here, some more terminology with which we need to be familiar, so we can talk about these technologies. Uh, the selector, in this example, the selector is the letter P. The selector applies the rules, which will be defined here, to the specified element, class, um, et cetera. And we'll see different ways of specifying different types of things. In this case, we're applying the rule to all paragraphs. We're applying the style to a particular element. Um, and what the rule set does, or, or what the rules do, is it declares um, specific values for different properties of that element, or different attributes of that element. So for example, here we're saying for all paragraphs, make the color property red. Okay. And so you can see the syntax here um, is a little JSON kind of like, but not exactly. Um, we have the property name followed by a colon, followed by the property value, and then a semicolon here. So that's the syntax of our, our CSS file. Um, one thing that gets challenging with, with CSS is it's not only used to style individual elements, it's also used to position those elements um, within the, the browser. And so in order to understand how that's done, you need to be familiar with the CSS box model. So here's an image representing that, that box model. Um, there are three attributes uh, with which we're concerned for the box model. Um, there is the padding, uh, which is here. It is the space around the content. The content is this text here. There is the border which is the line just outside of the padding. So it's this dark gray line here. And then there is the margin, which is the space outside of the border um, between all of this and other elements um, that are on the page. So the padding is the space from the content to the border. Then there's the border. And the margin is the space from the border to other elements. And this is referred to as the box model. We're going to see some live examples of this in just a moment. Um, highlighting here some of the symbols involved, because uh, I didn't really do those later or earlier. Um, curly bracket to um, after the selector to explain this to designate the start of the rule set, colon between the property and the property's value semicolon at the end. You got to have all those those different elements. All right, let's take a look at a real example. Um, so we are back here in our index.html file, and we're going to add a line of code to it. So up here in the head section, um, we are going to specify the style sheet for this HTML page. And we do that with the link attribute. And then we use the h or the link element, and then we use the href attribute to specify the partial path to a CSS file. We have a CSS file right here. It's called style.css. It's in our styles folder relative to index.html. So we're going to say styles slash styles.css. We will then also specify. This stands for relationship. I'm not quite sure about that, but it is a style sheet. So we know what it is we're linking to. This is a void element. So we close it here with a slash and the closing angle bracket. Let me save this change. 
let's take a look at style.css. So here is style.css. Um, and we can see there are several uh, rule sets here. We're defining a certain font size and font family for everything in terms of HTML, um, which will apply to like everything in the document. Um, however, um, if it's an H1 element, it will have a different font size um, and a different text alignment. And so we're going to see the relationship here. Basically, we're overriding this font size with this font size if it's an H1. Similarly, if it's a paragraph or a list item, those two have a different font size, they have different line heights, they have different letter spacings. You can see we're adding a background color to the entire HTML document. You can hover here in VS Code and actually edit this and view it, which is super cool. For the body, we're specifying a certain width um, in units of um, pixels um, and a certain margin. Um, background color, different background color for that. Some padding and a border, so we'll see what that looks like. Um, here's more H1 rules here regarding uh, margin and padding, color and shadows. Here's some stuff for an image um, with how it's being displayed. We'll see more about display um, properties in, in a bit. Um, and then this ties into what we saw earlier. So we go back to our HTML document. We assigned a value of demo to the class attribute for this button. And so we can refer to that in our CSS file here. So I can say button, which is the name of the element, but then dot demo, which is basically saying for all buttons whose class is demo, apply these rules. Now, if we had another button that didn't have um, the class set to a value of demo, this rule set would not apply to that button. So this rule set only applies to things that are both buttons and have a class of demo. Um, and I like that you can just like highlight or just hover on this and then it like explains it to you in the pop-up, which is fantastic. All right, let's see what this actually looks like. So here is Chrome. And you can see that our page looks a bit different than it did before. Um, you can see here is the body section and we have the orange background. The rest of our window here has the blue background. We have this like shadow effect on the header. Um, we have a certain size font here for our paragraph and list items. Um, the button looks different. You can see now we've got the white text on the blue background. So this page has been um, looks dramatically different in terms of how it's presented, in terms of the styling. It has exactly the same content as it had before. Um, and that's what the CSS sheet does. All right. Um, I think CSS um, is best understood through play and experimentation. And so what I want to show you today is how Chrome encourages that. So if I right click on my button here, I can choose inspect. And when I choose inspect, I get all these debugger tools. Um, and we'll, we'll explore many of these options um, throughout this unit. But for now, here is my HTML source. Um, and what I like is if I click over in this pane, and then as I hover over different lines, it highlights the thing I'm hovering over. So right now it's highlighting the entire body. If I scroll up here, I can see here it's highlighting just H1, and it shows me information about that. Here it's showing me the source. Here's that paragraph. Here's all my unordered lists. And I can spin this open if I want to see more information about any of these. Um, and then the same thing with the paragraphs, different paragraph, different paragraph. Here's the div we created and here's the actual button. Um, and if I click in the HTML here on the button or if I had just done the inspect, um, it highlights the line of code in the HTML corresponding to the button. And then it shows me all the styles related to the button. Um, and this is where you can get a sense of why it's called cascading, cascading style sheets. Um, you can see that there's certain styles inherited from HTML because there's a line through those. That means they've been overridden 
by a more specific um, rule set. So uh, here is all of our button styling information. So a bunch of button styling information here. Not that we had a lot. You can see some of those have been overridden. And most specifically here is button.demo. So again, button elements of the demo class. And you can see the things that we did. This isn't only, this is great. And it's really helpful for like understanding the, the cascading nature and things, but also we can turn stuff on and off. So like if I wanna see, well, what does this button look like if I turn off the background? I can just uncheck this and it turns off. Or what will this button look like if I choose a different color? I can click on the little color section here. I can pick a different color. Okay, like what if we make it like this orange color? What does that look like? And we can see what that is. We can experiment with padding. Um, we can change around the padding like, ooh, well maybe we need, oops, maybe we need a little bit more padding here. So what if I were to make this 30? Oh, okay. Look at what that did to the button, right? So I can play around with this and get a sense of, of how these these behave. Um, you know, I can change from left, from center to left um, and see what that does. Didn't look much different. Um, but I can experiment through all these different aspects, which is great. Um, so definitely take advantage of the web inspector to help you explore CSS and get a sense of what's going on. Um, I can click back up here and inspect like the H1 element. Um, and here I can see, um, here's the HTML properties. Here's the H1 ones by default. Here's the first set of H1 ones h1 rule set that we specified in our css file with the font size and the alignment here's some more we specified with margin and padding and color and that text shadow uh, which which is cool you'll also notice this is rendered here and this helps us understand um, the box model as it applies to this element so it shows us the size of the content it shows us the padding that is applied and notice it's highlighting it at the same time it shows us the border um, of which there isn't any, and then it shows us the margin of which there isn't any either. Um, but this is helpful to better understand the box model as we go.